this live martial arts class, you're going to learn the basics of the Japanese bow or the martial arts long staff. This is a follow along martial arts class. This will show you how to do the first level, the beginning level of the bow staff. And if you want to earn some uh, recognition, rank or whatever, this is a good place to start. This is like the white belt level going to the next level. This is all gonna be basics. Start with a staff in one hand and you're gonna turn it one way and then the other way. The first thing you need to learn how to do is warm up your body, strengthen your body so you can stay safe from injury during these workouts. This is a bow staff class, level one, or basic level. You're gonna do 30 seconds on one hand, just turning up, get that fluid moving through the joints, lubricate the joints, stay safe from injury. After about 30 seconds on one hand, you're gonna go into the other hand. Hello, Grant. I'm putting the curriculum you want to follow these classes in the structure of having the basic curriculum for the first level and then it's going to build on each other so this will be the first level i'll do this workout this full class is going to cover hello slick vic victor this is the basic level this is where we start with this warm-up 30 seconds in each hand but i'm going to build these classes out for you so if you wanted to get a good foundation one step's gonna build onto the next. You can master the basics. Black belt is just mastery of the basics. First level black belt, mastery of the basics, and then you build off of that. But if you wanna master the basics, get your black belt in the martial arts long staff, I have a curriculum for you. This is the first level right here. So you're just going from one hand, it turns up, the small side of the hand comes together, palms both facing the sky, and turns out. Each one of these should be done no less than 30 seconds. And I like to go with time instead of number of repetitions. 30 seconds is good for the body and the brain to start to figure some stuff out. Then, starting in the right hand, you're gonna turn it all the way up where you started, put the left hand on top, and you're gonna take it over the top. This is an overhand butterfly spin and the other hand is going to come under it so that the back of the hand is touching the palm of the other hand. This is my right hand on the bottom. It turns all the way over. The left hand stays on top and takes it. It's almost thumb to pinky. Palms are facing away from each other. And these warm-up spins to build some speed, strength, flexibility, dexterity. And sometimes I'm asked, why would you spin? You're not gonna spin when you fight. And the truth is the spinning is like doing push-ups for boxers. If you were in Muay Thai and you were gonna go uh, to a Muay Thai match and you were training at the training camp in Thailand, the coach is gonna have you punch the mitts, punch the bag, kick the bag. He's also gonna have you do push-ups, sit-ups, run, jumping jacks, jump the rope. It's like jumping rope. It's going to help with your cardio. 30 seconds going one way. Stop that. See how I put the hand there? That's just the way you stop all of that kinetic energy going back the other way. Left hand, pinky side up. There's the butterfly. So now if you're interested in learning the basics, going from the white belt to the next belt to the next belt, all the way to the black belt, mastering the basics. These would be requirements that I would ask you to learn. I wrote these down. If you want a copy of these, send me an email or ask me in the comments section below, put your email down there. If you don't wanna share with everybody, send me one directly and I'll send you a copy of the suggested requirements to learn the basics. Now with the left hand, going to put the left foot forward and you're going to start your infinity spin to the front of your body. Just leading with this thumb. I'm carving that sideways figure eight or the infinity sign. Thirty seconds here. 
Start to speed it up when you're ready. You can get more speed by squeezing your abs tight. Always make sure your chin is just a little tucked. Make sure you're not up like this. Don't look down to the ground, but just back and tucked a little. Then step up so that your feet are just directly into your body. Put your left hand out to the side and do that same infinity spin to the front of the body and to the back. Same exact spin, just a different plane. You see it a little bit slower. Bring it back here. Feet and stance on these warm up spins do not matter so much. Footing is really important. Just put your feet under your body, and that should be about right. When it becomes important, I'll make a note or I'll say, now you have to do this or step with this foot in front of the other. But for right now, whatever feels most natural, most comfortable, put it into the right hand. If you're starting to learn the bow staff at home, send me an email, pasquinelli at hotmail.com or info at quantumstrong, all one word, quantumstrong.com, info at quantumstrong.com. That might be easier to spell than my last name. Either one is good. Send me an email and I will send you the curriculum guide for the basic learn bow staff at home for beginners, level one, white belt, to the yellow belt and it's a checklist through each one every single day for about six weeks maybe eight weeks you'll be ready to go to level two start to speed that up squeeze the abs tight pushing faster in this case your right foot's in front of the left you're spinning with your right hand then step up so your feet are just under your body put the hand to the side do that same motion but if you want to know exactly what you should be doing at home according to me I will send it to you you're gonna learn how to do the Japanese style the Korean style the Chinese style and a little bit of some other styles I'm gonna teach you how to get strong with your body and in your mind I'm gonna teach you how to defend with it and how to fight with it if you want to fight people in competitions I'll teach you how to do that that's all part of this curriculum you wanna use it for street fight self-defense as a walking stick or a walking staff. I'm gonna teach you how to use it for that. But right now we're just warming up in this basic level. I wanna build strength, speed, power. And again, all of this spinning is like a boxer jumping rope. You might not spin when you fight to defend yourself, but you need to spin and training to build capacity to fight. And a broomstick is the perfect way to start. All right, so you did that on each side. Now go back to the left hand where you started, put your left foot in front and reverse that spin, pulling up, pulling up. It's that same sideways figure eight, but now you're going in the opposite direction, pulling and pulling. That's also how I started. I started with a broomstick, I had a rake, I had a painter's pole, a sanding pole. Long before I ever got my first martial arts staff, Spin anything. Don't wait to start. Start with what you have. And then it's like they say that the uh, teacher will appear when the student's ready. Well, the staff will appear when you're ready. But don't wait. You don't need the official staff from a martial arts supply company with a big markup. You need a stick. And then later, when you know what you're doing and it feels right, start using different kinds of wood this one today is rattan that means it shakes when i hit with it right and it's a little bit lighter it's a good way to start there's no wrong way to start waiting to start is wrong so this is all reverse and i'm pulling up and pulling up and you have to learn this in this basic level put it back in that right hand right foot forward pulling up this is a reverse infinity spin the term infinity comes from the idea that it doesn't stop spinning and because if you look at what my hand is doing, this is the symbol of infinity, the infinity car, which is based on the concept of never ending, infinity, endless spinning or infinity, infinite spins. Wouldn't that be fun? So in front of the body, the feet come up and under you and it's the same thing. 
Yes, we're gonna get the wrist rolls in, but not on this first level. That's actually level two, but you're gonna fly through this first level. What's gonna happen is you're gonna get so strong here, you're gonna move. By the time you get to that second level, they're gonna be easier for you, but I want it to be a little hard. Challenge and support. That means it's kind of like uh, stair steps, right? A little bit harder, but I give you a little bit more support, and then you get up to this next level and next level. It's always attainable and reachable, but when it gets to the top, you're gonna to be amazing with this thing. Defending yourself, fighting, demonstrating, throwing it and catching it, all the things you wanna do, but also you're gonna be learning how to do things at a much, much higher level, and you're gonna have uh, new challenges. Things are gonna be much more frustrating, but that's how you constantly expand and grow. All right, so now we've done infinity spins forward and reverse. I want you to take two hands on your staff and there are two ways to hold the staff. One is gonna be like this, where both hands are facing away from you and the other one, or they could be facing into you. But one way is this way, the other way is with an alternating grip, okay? Yes, we'll post all of this stuff. One way, this way, this way. This way today, in this basic class, beginner class, I want you to have both hands like you're gonna do a push-up. From here, you're gonna bring it to the left side of your body. This is my left side. And if you get the right side, it doesn't really matter because you only have two sides. So from here, you're gonna go down to the other side and then back up here. So now the right hand is on top. What this really is, is a strike a strike down on top of their head. You're going down, and your, my feet are just under my body in what I call a neutral stance. Don't overthink it though. From here, left hand is below the right, my right elbow's up, the right hand comes down in front of my body. It's gonna clear in front of my body. I just turn my hip a little, and then my right hand comes up, the left hand comes over and down. And now this is a figure eight spin or the infinity spin with two hands to each side of the body. This is the motion that you see when Darth Maul, played by Ray Park, does some of his two-handed spinning with the double-bladed lightsaber. Just for a point of reference, there are different ways to do it. There's something called, in this position, you're constantly changing the hand position rolling the bow and it's not turning the same but what you're learning right now is this style there's also with the hands together this style which you will also learn you're gonna learn every single thing that i know anyway and then a lot more that i haven't learned yet but from here and i know uh, I, I according to myself i think I, I know a lot already a lot of it's exciting to me to be able to teach all this to you but I want you to know this two-handed spin, and you'll feel it takes you, uh, you have to turn your body. Then I want you to start to move forward and turn a little bit more as you step forward, and you don't have to go that far, and then back just a few steps, forward a few steps, and you can see that by stepping, it turns my body, allowing me to increase the speed, allowing you to increase your speed, but at least 30 seconds. You can do a little bit more than that if you want. So those are all the spins on this first level. Now we're going into strikes and bro uh, blocks, strikes and blocks. The first one is gonna be an upper angled strike. And anytime you think of martial arts, any punch that's coming to your face, you can block with that traditional upper karate block or Taekwondo, Tang Sudo block, comes from here and it's just up. It has to have this angle. Any, like a punch straight to your face. Most people think someone's chopping you or it's a hammer hand or whatever. That's why you high block, that's wrong. Anything from here to here, a slap to the face, poke to the eye, stab with a knife through your neck is a high block. Anything from here down is that low block. We're gonna do from here, from the chest, up, above the forehead, so out, but then also up. From here, up. And when you do this, I want you to do this in a front stance. A front stance is going to be Starting with my left foot in front of my right, bend the knee. If you look down on the front stance, when you look down, you shouldn't be able to see your toes. That's how far your knee should bend. If 
um, you see your toes, bend your knees a little bit more. It's going to be hard for you to go past that, so don't worry about going past it too much. The back leg is locked. The knee is locked. The foot can turn out just a little bit, but don't overthink it. It doesn't have to be perfect. It has to be done. Get it done first. Front stance with the left foot in front of the right. The right leg straight back. Lock it. Squeeze your stomach up and in. Push your feet on the floor. Pull two hands like you're doing push-ups from the chest up. In and up. From here, straight up. One, two, three. After about 15 seconds, step with the other foot. Now, your right knee bends enough so you can't see your right toes. Back leg's locked from your chest. Same thing, from here, up. Perfect, you're doing it right. From here, up, up. About 15 seconds on each side because you're doing about 30 seconds on each one. And the reason I say 30 seconds is because it takes 30 seconds to make that connection, but it's also too little, or less than that's too little. More than that, you're going to get it in the rest of the exercise anyway. We're going to do this repetition over and over and over, but we're going to change it every workout. So we disguise it so you get more done without getting bored and getting burned out. By the way, if you get bored, it's because you're doing it in a boring way. Increase your intensity, your focus, your excitement, and enthusiasm. If you get bored in anything the rest of your life, it's your fault. If you're bored, you're boring. All right, left foot forward from here, up, two, three. Take a step, pow, and if you want, you can start to step and push, step and push, back and push. Either way is fine. You can either move forward and move back. The second thing is from your chest, straight down, straight down. And when you do this, squeeze like you're trying to push this thing together. It's going to activate your chest muscles. What about the foot? Say the, uh, the foot again. There's a question about the foot. All right, if you have a question, put it in the comment section below. I can read it later or get it up there real quick. The back foot, flat. You have seven points on the bottom of your foot. You have your heel, your five toes, and the side, right? One, two, three, four, five, six. The seventh is the ball of the foot, that big part right under your big toe. I know this isn't my foot, but I don't, <laughs> lifting my foot up there, but you have seven points. Eventually, all seven points, it's like doing a handstand with the gymnastics. All your fingers move. When you get really, really, really good at gymnastics, it's the same thing. Those seven points need to be touching on both feet, front foot and back foot, both flat. From here, driving into the ground. And I know it's kind of hard with the uh, height of the camera. We'll figure that out. But you can't see that my feet flat on the floor. That's a really good question. Bend the knees so you can't see the toes. All seven points touching the floor and pushing like you're trying to push them apart and your legs are going to fire. You're going to feel that heat coming out of your body as your muscles work. So you start to push your feet apart and you've got low block. Pushing your hands together and down at the same time. Left foot forward and then step with the right. Same thing. Straight down, 30, se or 30 seconds total, 15. And again, you can move forward, move back. If you want, move forward, move back. And then I'm going to go back into the front stance, left foot forward here from my chest. I'm gonna punch, again, push up position, punch right to your temple. I want this to hit you so hard here. It either makes you go uh, blind, or your eye pops out of your head for self-defense. So from here, punching punching right to the temple and then now if I'm doing the Japanese style I'm gonna have this strike and then it's gonna come across this way you're gonna do that on level two level one right here to the face and then the other side you learn how to fight very fast you're gonna learn how to fight Ray Park style Star Wars lightsaber style right one two one two one two when you bring it to a stop, bring it up and over. It's uh, rattan. It's rattan, and then at the um, they, they peel it, and they make it look bamboo by burning it to look like bamboo. It's not bamboo. Bamboo's heavier. It's less flexible, and 
uh, breaks easier. So, uh, it doesn't feel the same. I love rattan as a basic staff, as a beginner staff, because you're gonna have that quick pop, 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 hard movement. You're not gonna break it as easily because it's so much more durable because it flexes, right? So this one's rattan. I like to use rattan or um, oak to start. The oak, especially white oak. White oak, for some reason, is a lot stronger than the red oak staffs that I have. But I think it's because the white oak is a better tree and it's a better piece of wood. And I think they mass produce those red oak ones and they're just garbage. A lot of them get dried out and then you hit it against even a bag or another stick and they break. You can use these for uh, months against the partner practicing, hitting staff together, and they're not gonna break that easily. All right, so we're in the front stance, left foot forward, bend the knees so you can't see the toe. All seven points touching the floor, trying to separate your feet. You won't, because your body's there, right? Uh, 70 to 75% of the weight on the front leg, less on the back, but your feet are digging in. And again, don't worry about the small pieces here. Get the big picture, and then we'll refine it as you go toward mastery of the basics. Black belt, First level, mastery of the basics. Then you progress through the different levels of black belt with refined skills and esoteric things that other people can't do. Maybe you come up with your own, you can do that. Anyway, from here, like we're doing push-ups, up to the chin, temple, neck, whatever. One, two, one, two, one, two. And don't be afraid, you're gonna get a little bit of bruising. It's not gonna last forever though. Stop it here, right over that elbow. Then, step forward with the other foot. Practice to the knee. Knee, one, two, one, two. You're going straight down. Same angle you did before here, but we're doing it here. Two, one, two. Hard and fast. You can start to move forward. Move forward and move back. Two, three. All depends on what kind of space you have. If you have like, I love these mats that I have because they're little squares, about two, uh, two feet wide, but two feet wide. And I try to do the whole workout in that little square and I can get it done. You can get it done too. So 30 seconds, upper strikes, 30 seconds, with those lower strikes. Now, with the hands together, they're going to start to cross. I'm gonna see this really slowly. My left hand, right hand is going down. Left hand is coming up to my right shoulder. It's my left hand on my right shoulder. One quick word. Don't take your hand off to make this happen. You'll try, most of us try, take the hand off because it doesn't make sense and then we start doing this, we got lost. This is the starting point. The hands are not coming off. From here, comes around. You know what I said earlier about uh, not getting bored? I haven't been bored doing martial arts ever once in my life. You won't either if you turn up your intensity. Life's too short. If you're bored, it's because you're boring. All right, bring it around. And around and around, it comes to your shoulder. Now that puts my left hand in my armpit. My right hand's on my shoulder, my left hand's on my armpit. Then I'm gonna do a down block, just like I would if you're trying to stick a knife in my gut, I'm gonna smash your hand away. Just like if you grab my wrist, and I didn't want you to hold my wrist, I'd smash this hand down while I pull this hand back. That's kind of what we're doing. But we're not letting go. One more time. From here, left hand to the right shoulder, right hand under the armpit, and block down. Bring it around. Block down the other side. One side, and then the other side. I wanted you to see it a little bit quicker. I'm gonna slow it down again, right from the starting point. And right now, don't worry about your feet. Just put them under your body. From here, left hand to the right shoulder, right hand in the left armpit, bring it straight down. When you come down, push your hip a little bit. This is a deflecting motion or a block. When they do that strike to your body, you're gonna block this way. So from here, left hand, right shoulder, right hand in the armpit, down and turn a little bit, clear it. Clear it means just push it out of the way.
bring it around, just comes out. Starting point, right hand to the left shoulder, left hand in your right armpit, slowly extend straight down, clear it, bring it in, and then turn it until it can't turn any longer because your left hand is on your right shoulder again. Bring it down slowly. It's, you're just doing a full turn every single time. And if you get lost, you will get lost. You can get lost. I got lost so many times at the beginning. Come back to the beginning point, starting point. Beauty about martial arts is you learn something, you get really good at it, and then they show you something different and hard and new. It's going to challenge your brain in a new way. Mushem is an empty mind. You need an empty mind when you train. Push everything else out so that you're ready to learn. Number two, a beginner's mind. Choshem is Korean term. Choshem means beginner's mind. So just when you think you're a black belt, you know everything, you learn something new, and you have to humble yourself. Get your ego out of the way so you can keep growing. Because when you stop growing, you die. It's that simple. You stop growing, you start to wither up get static in your mind. It's just like water that doesn't move. Mosquitoes will come and plant their babies and their eggs in that stagnant, stale, fetid, stinky water. And the mosquitoes will hatch and light you up. They'll eat you, suck in your blood, right? That's what happens when you stop growing and you don't have that beginner's mind. You need that beginner's mind. Choshem, always learn something new. Keep the water flowing. Don't build a dam and try to keep it in. Don't try to hold on to it. Get something new every single time you can. All right, from the beginning, my left hand comes to the right and I'm down. My right hand comes to the left shoulder and I'm down. Never once have I taken my hands off the staff. Add the little turn of the hip, clear, clear, and we're almost done with the blocks and the strikes. And then you gotta learn the kata, the pumse, the form, the pattern, whatever you wanna call it. Canada, they call them patterns. Uh, whatever you want to call it. Kata is the Japanese word. Pumse is the Korean word. I forget the Chinese word. But all martial arts, not all, a lot of martial arts have forms, patterns. Nobody cares. Exactly. Yes, I will end it. Whatever your name is, 37 GT, Olds or whatever. As soon as you super chat me, super chat me 50 bucks, I'll end it right now. Probably won't. Let's see if we're me 50 bucks and we'll see. Bring it out horizontally. Bring it around. Bring it out. This becomes a strike. Down is a block. When I bring it here and I turn to the side and I turn to the other side and I aim it right at your face. It knocks your jaw off your face. That's a strike and a strike. I want you to now Turn into the front stance, going to the left. Turn into the front stance to the right. Striking horizontal. This is crossing the arm strike. One, two, where's that 50 bucks? Three, four, five, six. Side is 30 seconds. All right, so we've done all of the basic things you need to know. Let's work on that form. And I'm gonna show you a couple different ways and we're going to do this class again and again and again, different ways every time. And then we're going to keep moving. All right. From here, I want you to start with this bow in this basic beginner position. All you're doing is bringing your feet together. The toes don't have to touch. You can be out just a little bit. Your hand, finger is going to be facing down. You're going to be holding behind it. Now, some of you know why there are all these bows and all these salutes and all these different things in the uh, Asian martial arts. And I'll tell you if you don't. It comes from the fact that a lot of those cultures, when the martial arts spread, especially Korean and Chinese, or Korean and Japanese, when they came over to this country and to the West, they came out of militaristic societies where you had a military general in charge of the country, literally. And people were all in the military because they had so many years of war during that time, right before the martial arts left Korea, left Japan. So they have all of these saluting motions that, are, that you'll see in martial arts. That's the great dichotomy, the great um, contradiction between the Zen side of martial arts 
everything's everything, everything is one, we're all the same. And then the Confucian hierarchy where they, you know, the ranks, the belts and all that other stuff. And this guy's in charge and you have to bow to him and all that stuff. So you have this structure here. Yes, I'll see you a little bit later. Learn this form. But that's the reason for this bow. So when you bow with the bow staff in this style, and there, there are different ways you can do it. There's one way where you're going to come up here, and you're going to start like this. On this one, you're going to start just straight up and down like you would if you were in the Marine Corps and you had a rifle, or you're carrying the guide on, which is the flag for your unit or your company or platoon or whatever. So from here, come straight out and then in here. Now when I'm here, I'm going to lift my left hand. So this is my right hand. It's just like chin high, straight, going to come up, and then it's going to come in to grab it. That's going to get me this position. This is how you're going to start your kata or your pumse, your form. So from here, comes up, bows. This hand lifts. This left hand comes up. The right hand comes in. You're going to bend your knee as you turn every form. From now, if you ever learn a martial art that has a form in it, a kata, pumse, whatever, always turn your head first if you're moving. Your body follows the head. The head should never turn at the same time as the body. That's so that when you turn, your brain does that split second calculation that tells you how to step into the fight, not fall into the fight. When you turn your head and your body at the same time, you'll always be following. Thank you. Keep watching. Keep watching them. Share with your friends. Show everybody how dumb this video is. Share with as many people as you possibly can. I bet you can't from here. Comes up, in, pull. This hand comes here. You're going to turn, step into the front stance and high block. From that high block position, going to the left, you're then going to strike to the face of the left hand and then the right hand. And then you're going to bring your left foot into your right. Pivot. Remember, your head turns first. Step with the right. High block. Strike right, strike left. Bring your right foot in. Cross the hands, left hand to the right shoulder. Step with the left foot into the back stance, low block. Step with the right foot through into a back stance, shift, bring the right hand to the left shoulder, and low block. Bring it in, you're gonna bring your left foot in, turn, step out with the left, low block. Punch down left, punch down right, bring your left foot in, turn, step with the right, low block, punch down, punch down, right foot in, step back into the back stance, left foot, Bring your left hand to your shoulder, low black, step through, right hand to your shoulder, low block. Bring your left foot in, turn into the front stance. Then you're going to do your cross strike, bring it around, cross strike. Then you're back into your starting position, but first spin, spin, bring it behind your back. So your palm is down like that, and then bring it back up holding your hand this way, down, from here straight up, and bow. That's the kata, that's the pumse. I have that written out for you. I'm gonna make videos just of that part if you wanna study just that one. I'm gonna show you one more time though. And I don't think there's enough chatter from the guys who think I should end this uh, stream. Please, I'm still waiting. Give me that uh, super chat. I bet you can't share this with others. Reddit is a great place to go and say, Look at this fool with his staff. What do you think he's doing? I bet you won't post it on Reddit. All right, from here, feet together. He comes up, lift, comes in, step into that front stance, always look first. You're gonna do the high block, left, right. Bring the foot in, turn, step into the front stance, high block, right, left, bring that foot in, step. The back stance, the back foot turns to the side, the front foot, goes forward and it makes an L shape. My weight is mostly back, 70% or 75% back here. The rest is in the front. From here, the left hand comes to the right shoulder, down block, and I'm gonna step through, pivoting on the left foot. So from here, I put the weight here and I step. My right hand comes to the left shoulder, down block, I'm gonna bring it in, I'm gonna bring my left foot in, I'm gonna pivot, stepping into the front stance with the left foot forward, I'm gonna down block, punch left, punch right, left foot in, pivot, step with the right,
down block, punch, arms, other hand first, right, left, bring the right foot in, step back stance, the right foot is now facing the side, the left foot's going to the back. From here, I'm gonna do another crossing, down block, means the left hand comes to the right shoulder, step through, block with the right, turn, bring your feet together, step into that front stance, strike, bring it around, strike, one side, the other side, down, up, and there's the bow. And that's it. And I, I just showed you a couple times. I will make, like I said, I'll make the video just with that. Keep uh, training with your bow staff, train Pinkox a lot, whatever you train with, train with it every single day. And again, if you're getting bored, it's because you're doing it in a boring way. Let me know in the comment section what your thoughts are. And for all of those of you who want to show me what you can do, I love to see it. Send me a video or, or post the links in this video of you either training what I do or training what you do, training what somebody else does. You're going to put Master Wong's videos in there. You're going to put Jake Mace in there. Put Jace Mace in there. You're welcome very much. I really appreciate you guys so much. I, like I said, send me the uh, info at quantum.strong. I'll send you the checklist. I don't charge for this. If you want a belt, you want me to watch your videos, send you comments back, and um, give you the belt and the certificate when you level up so you can master the basics and get your black belt in this style of bow staff, then I'll charge a little bit. But for the rest of it, all these classes, always free from me to you. Thank you so much. Yeah, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to ban. I'm going to go back and try to find some of those guys who are inappropriate. But, and here's why. I don't care if they like me or not. I really don't. For my whole life, since I was a little kid, I don't care if you make fun of me, pick on me. You don't have to like me. And I know, I know for a fact, none of these guys would ever say it to my face. There was a guy when I was in Ohio, and he lives here. He lives down the street. I know where this guy lives. And he used to come on, and he'd say some of the most inappropriate things to me because I stood up for another person because I hate bullies. I smash bullies. That's my goal in life, right? I wanna teach you how to smash your own bullies. And it's a word. You don't have to like me, but you can't make fun of me. You don't have to like me, you can't tease me. You can't touch me, you can't push me, punch me. You can't call me names on the internet even. But you don't have to like me. You don't have to like who I am, what I stand for, what I say. Yes, I do. But I know you would never come to me and say it to me right here, face to face. And so I see. But, but, but it's, it's so interesting to me that behind this wall of uh, anonymity on the internet, these guys with such small self-esteem pick on other people just because they feel a certain way. It feeds a certain negative energy that they have, that you have, whatever your name is, Viserys or whatever. I get it. I understand. I've made many mistakes in my life too. I'm not perfect, but what I'm saying is the, um, the, the, the world right now is in this chaotic situation because nobody knows how to say the truth and speak up for themselves and say, look, you don't have to like me, but you can't make fun of me. Or go up and you see somebody else picked on and say, hey, man, I saw that. That wasn't cool. Are you okay? And just ask them and show them that they're not alone. And you're not alone. When someone's picking on you, you're not alone. Other people say it. But the world, society, especially in the West, has pushed, pushed us. Bullies don't really like to fight. They like to fight if, they, if you don't fight back. They like to fight if everybody around them laughs and cheers. It doesn't say anything. But as soon as I go to the bully and I say, hey man, I saw what you did to that guy. That's not cool. Don't do that again. That's not right. And he says, oh, I don't care what you say, man. And I just say, don't do it again. I saw it. And then I go to the guy and I say, hey man, I saw what he said. That's not cool. So you reach out and you say to somebody else, hey, I saw that. That's not cool. That wasn't right. So they know that they're not alone because the worst thing about this internet bullying junk is that it makes you feel so alone because so especially young people their whole life is here right it's in the it's in the phone it's in the tablet it's on the computer and they start getting picked on and make fun of here and they think that's their whole life is gone because they don't know anything outside of that because we adults my age we didn't train you right we didn't tell you because they say in school hey we're all friends here, friends, which is wrong. We're not friends. I don't have to be your friend, but I have to be respectful and I should be polite and I should be kind. I don't have to like you and you don't have to like me, but you can't talk to me like that. And 
when you, no, he doesn't need killed, he just needs to know, right? That we see him, you're not funny, no one thinks you're funny, right? Yeah, I'll gladly give him a lesson, one-on-one, -on -one, private, come here, I'll teach you, and we can talk, you can get it all out, right? I'm a big punching bag, that's a good, good thing for me. But you have to understand, you're not alone, that some things shouldn't be said, that it's not right to pick on someone else just because uh, you think you're allowed to, that you're not allowed to. But the adults, school teachers, don't know how to say to the bully, knock it off, that's not cool. Instead, they talk to the whole group. Now, we're all friends, we should talk to each other like friends, like friends. No, you go to the kid who's the bully, you know who he is, and you say, man, that's not cool, don't do that again. You do that again, here's your consequence. You don't get to do this, this, and this. He doesn't go to jail. You don't, it's the extremes. We haven't learned how to just say, hey, man, don't do that. Yeah, and it's not even, Boy, Boy Scouts don't even do it anymore. Yeah. Nobody that I know of that I see is doing it right. They either want to make it a joke or they want to talk around the subject. No one knows how to just come directly. It's like if I'm defending myself, put my hands up, get in your face. Don't touch me. Back up. It's that simple. And then if you come closer, I will defend myself. And I'm going to block. And I'm going to guard, right? And if I have to, I'm going to strike. And, you ha and if we need to, we can go to the ground. But you have to teach that basic stuff. I'll see you on the next one. Thank you so much. We're going to fix this bullying stuff. Fix the world if you can fix the bullies. I'll see you on the next one.